There's process properties. If I double click on this, it looks a lot like Process Explorer, not, not uh, by accident. So we see the path, the command line, parent process ID, start time, and integrity, here's the start time, and the list of DLLs that are loaded into it. Filtering is a key tri uh, kind of technique master that you should master as you use Process Monitor to get rid of all the noise and focus on the things you want to focus on. And there's lots of different ways to do filtering. Like I can just right click on a particular entry, row, column, and say filter by that. Include it, exclude it, highlight it, copy it to the, that row to the clipboard. Exclude items before this, exclude items after this. So if I say this, and then I can click on the filtering icon and do more complex filtering up here, like company is, contains, and then say anything from Lenovo, for example. I could do filters for that. So lots of different ways to filter. The filter that's most useful for looking at a situation where you've got malware reinfecting machine or you've got an example where you can watch what, how a malware infects the machine is category is right. Category is right will only show you modifications to the system. So we see that Explorer is doing some modifications to the user assist count registry value and it's updating it with some information there. So you can see there's not, typically not a lot of modification activity going on in the system, but if you've got a malware infection, you're gonna see that being impacted as we'll see shortly. The last thing I wanna talk about for process monitor before we move on is the process tree. It looks a lot like Process Explorer's process tree, except with a nice, cool difference, and that is that it sees everything. So if I do a short-lived process like IP config, which might not have been captured in Process Monitor, or Process Explorer, I can go down and see it right there. In other words, they can run, but they can't hide from Process Monitor. All right, so enough pre preamble. So I've kind of introduced you to the tools with some pseudo malware that I've created that I'm quite proud of to get the feature feel for the capabilities of Process Monitor, Auto Runs, and Process Explorer. Let's take a look at some real cases now. I've got a bunch of real cases. The first one is a piece of live scareware called WinWebSec, and I picked this one because if you look at this from the latest Microsoft Security incident uh, security intelligence report, you'll see that when it comes to scareware, WinWebSec is still currently the second most prevalent piece of scareware, and it's been the most prevalent up there floating around for several years now as it really in impacting people. If you go to this link down here, which I've got opened up in the browser, where did the browser go? Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. then you'll see that WinWebSec comes with a whole bunch of different aliases. So it's one of those antivirus, ant, uh, scareware engines that's skinned, and that's the way Sys Internals Antivirus is also skinned, off an engine like this. Let me pull up, let's get uh, WinWebSec ready to go. This will come up in a, a second here. And when it does, I'm gonna launch WinWebSec. I'm gonna have Process Monitor watching, and we're gonna see how this thing more aggressively takes over the machine over the next few minutes as I try to use the machine. Okay. Connecting, and so, What I'll do is launch it right now. And it's gonna install, I'll launch Process Explorer. And I'll launch Auto Runs. And so it's letting me run these things right now. As it starts to scan my system. And it's gonna, believe it or not, on this clean Windows 7 install, find a lot of malware. Believe it or not. That's uh, going to get wound up here in a second. OK. 
Okay. I promise, there it goes. Let's take a, a look at what it's finding while it's finding it. And I'm not sure why we're having these hiccups here because normally it just blasts on through. focus. All right, let me try this. I'm trying to zoom in for you. Here we go. Let's see what it's found. Uh, KBD, it's found Trojans. It's found uh, Zotob. That's one that you might have heard of. Netsky, another one. It's found NS Lookup. Oh, that's a really bad one. <laughs> oh, Ping. That's even worse. So you'll see that it's just making crap up here at this point. And I think, you know, these guys have a sense of humor when they write these things. And so let's say, uh, you know what, I'm done. I, I'm convinced. Stop. You're scaring me. Well, 23 infections found can lead to system crashes, slowdowns. But you know what? I don't really mind those things. I kind of live with them on a daily basis anyway. So I'm going to continue unprotected. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Well, at this point, it's going to start to get unhappy with me eh, because I'm not buying into the thing. Oh, like, oh, you better turn on virus protection. Windows is now bothering me. Turn on now. No, I don't want to. Oh, there's no close button on that. Um, oh, by the way, let's see who's launching this. It is this thing down here, which is a piece of malware. It ha exhibits the characteristics we talked about, a lot of them anyway. It has no description and no company name. And it's sitting inside of the user profile instead of in the places where you'd expect it to see it in the program files, direct, uh, program files directory. And the reason that malware is sticking itself in this direct, these directories now is because they don't need admin rights to write there. And so malware is becoming more and more standard user familiar. Well, so let's say that I, uh, you know what, I'm just going to move this out of the way. I don't care about it. But at this point, it's going to get really irritated with me and launch Windows Update. No, it's, that's not what it's supposed to do. <laughs> it is going to come up. Oh, and there, it tells me Calc is infected with something. And at this point, it's like my machine becomes completely unusable and I'm forced to do something about it. Unfortunately, <clears throat> in this case, we're not able to run auto runs even. So let's go take a look at how we'd clean a system like this. And the technique we're going to use is to boot into safe mode. How do you boot into safe mode? On Windows 7 machines, it's a, in pre, prior, it's as simple as rebooting the machine, pressing F8, and saying safe mode. On Windows 8, it's this big dance of going through PC settings and general and startup repair and then picking, I, I, no, I really want to repair. No, I really want to do an advanced thing. Uh, out of those advanced things, I want to do uh, safe mode. So there's another way to do that, and that's just create a Windows 7 USB key and then boot that in, off the system, or Windows, uh, Windows to go, so, and do it offline. Booting Windows 8 into safe mode is, uh, is an uh, IQ test on its own, so I generally try to avoid it. But now we've booted into, uh, oh, that's not safe mode. What happened here? Reboot. Oh, what I've done here is before the system comes up, what is happening is that this thing actually doesn't write itself to the auto run key. So if we'd run auto runs, we're not going to be able to even see it write to any key. And, but when we reboot the machine, it's going to come right back. And the reason it comes back is that it is actually putting itself, whoops, continue unprotected, yes. It's putting itself in the run ones key. And it's putting itself in the run ones key here. As you can see, run ones on its shutdown. And the way that I captured this is I did a, a Windows process monitor. Great, new database update. Uh, did a process monitor boot log. So if I enable